over here if you want. Yeah, might as well. Yeah, we can have an intimate conversation. You and I, let's do it. Uh, Steve Ashman, NBA.com. Um, uh, the first two games, the first game, Denver um, was unhappy with itself for allowing too many open three-point shots. Second game, they felt they had communication breakdowns that led to you guys hitting those shots. What have you seen from them tactics-wise to try to address that area of the floor the last two games? Yeah, it seems like they've uh, prioritized that, um, just maybe helping a little bit less on, on drives and um, staying home a little bit more. So, you know, it's, it's an adjustment. It's something that, that we're used to, and we feel we can still generate, you know, good three-point looks, and that's just going to be a matter of, you know, running good, crisp offense with, with, uh, with pace in the, you know, full court and half court, um, and then just playing to our strength. So definitely give them some credit um, in terms of just staying home just a little bit more. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, uh, we feel like we can still generate, generate good looks. We're going to stay in the left, third row. Duncan, what's it like uh, matching up with Bruce Brown in the finals, given the, uh, the history between you guys, the, uh, the relationship? I know you guys go back. Bruce was in here talking about that earlier. Is it kind of fun to look across? Like you're matched up there in the fourth quarter, a couple of key, key moments late in the game there. How cool is that? Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't cool that he was killing us <laughs> and, uh, and we were losing. Uh, that wasn't cool. But, um, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Bruce and his journey and the path that he's taken. And, you know, we like, a, like he probably had mentioned, you know, we go back, same area, um, playing with, against each other, high school, and then just following his career <clears throat> all the way through. <clears throat> Sorry. It's been really cool to see him really kind of re reinvent himself um, and, and constantly find ways. I mean, he's just a good basketball player, and, and he can do it in different ways and comes in as a point guard and is a really good point guard for, for Detroit and then finds a, a new role in, in Brooklyn and bounces around, and, and now he's you know obviously a big part of a um, you know Western Conference champion. So uh, he's, he's a really good player, really good dude, and it's, uh, it's always fun to go against people that you, you know, have, a, have a history with. We'll go back to Steve. Uh, Steve Ashburn or NBA.com. Um, given the way you guys have uh, typically responded when your backs are against the wall, when you're underdogs, um, we could almost say you have the nuggets where you want them right now. Um, what is it about your team and resiliency and, you know, finding another gear or just saying no when, when the other side wants to say yes? Yeah, you know, I think we have really solid leadership in place, um, you know, whether it be coaching staff, whether it be guys that are, are battle tested in that sense. And I think we have a collective trust and belief in each other uh, that regardless of the circumstances, we have enough to get it done. And I think we also just don't get too far ahead of ourselves. You know, we take it step by step. Like today, it's just all about maximizing this prep and this practice. And tomorrow on uh, the morning, it'll be the same. And then, you know, when the balls get rolling out tomorrow night, it's just about finding a way to, to get one game and, and we'll go from there. So. Um, just kind of having that resolve and experience, I think, makes a big difference. Any more questions? Nice. Okay, thanks a lot, Duncan.